today we are going to discuss about the hypertension so hypertension we are going to see what is the definition of hypertension then what are the types of hypertension then what is the classifications of hypertension then what is the etiology for hypertension then what is the epidemiology for hypertension then what is the physiology then what are the complications of hypertension then what is the diagnostic test for hypertension then finally what is the treatment or management of the hypertension so coming to the definition of the hypertension so hypertension is blood pressure elevated through to perfuse tissues and organs so elevated the systemic blood pressure is usually defined as the systolic reading greater than or equal to 140 mm per hg and diastolic reading greater than or equal to 90 mm per hg then uh, hypertension is a sustained elevate elevation of bp so systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 140 mm per hg and diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 90 mm per hg then factors influencing the blood pressure so blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into total peripheral resistance so coming to the cardiac output so cardiac output is nothing but the amount of blood pumped from the heart then a total peripheral resistance the total peripheral resistance of the systemic circulation then coming to the classification of hypertension so it's classified into two types so first one primary or essential hypertension then second one secondary hypertension so coming to the primary hypertension it's the elevation of bp with the unknown cause then a 90 percentage to 95 percentage of the all cases can gets them this type of hypertension then coming to the secondary hypertension so the elevated bp with a specific cause so 5 percentage to 10 percentage of the adults can get the secondary hypertension then uh, coming to the primary hypertension contributing factors so increased sympathetic nervous system activity then uh, diabetes mellitus then increased sodium intake then excessive alcohol intake then uh, coming to the secondary hypertension contributing factors renal disease it may be acute renal failure or chronic renal failure then endocrine disorders hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or diabetes then neurological disorders so for all these diseases we have to treat with underlining cause then coming to the classification of hypertension so it's classified into three types pre hypertension stage 1 hypertension and stage 2 hypertension then uh, coming to the normal blood pressure it's the 120 by 80 so 120 is the systolic bp and 80 is the diastolic bp so coming to the pre hypertension so systolic uh, blood pressure 120 to 139 mm per hg and diastolic blood pressure 80 to 89 mm per hg then stage 1 hypertension systolic blood pressure 140 to 159 mm per hg and diastolic blood pressure 90 to 99 mm per hg then stage 2 hypertension greater than or equal to 160 mm per hg and uh, greater than or equal to 100 mm per hg then coming to the physiology of the hypertension so sympathetic nervous system and baroreceptor then second one renin angiotensin aldosterone system then third one fluid volume regulations then coming to the sympathetic nervous system and baroreceptors so baroreceptors is the pressure receptor it's present in the carotids and aortic arc it's response to changes in blood pressure so it's influence the arterial dilation and arterial constriction then the contractile force strength increasing the heart rate and increasing the cardiac output then finally it's the elevation of bp then the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so renin is released from the kidney jexa glomerular cells then the renin react with the circulating angiotensinogen so it's converted into angiotensin 1 so angiotensin 1 is the weak vasoconstrictor then angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 so angiotensin 2 is the potent vasoconstrictor then aldosterone released then it's increased the plasma volume then increased the heart rate then increased the cardiac output then finally it's increased bp then coming to the fluid volume regulations so increased fluid volume increases the venous return then it's affecting the cardiac output and tissue perfusion then increasing the blood pressure 
then factors influencing the bp heart rate sympathetic nervous system peripheral nervous system vasoconstriction and vasodilation then coming to the risk factors for primary hypertension so age greater than 55 for men then greater than 65 for women then alcohol intake cigarette smoking diabetes mellitus elevated serum lipids then excess dietary sodium then family history then obesity ethnicity african americans then sedentary lifestyle then socio economic status and stress then coming to the symptoms of hypertension fatigue dizziness palpitations angina and dyspnea then coming to the complications of hypertension so complications are primarily related to development of the atherosclerosis hardening of the arteries or fatty deposits into the arteries the common complications are target organ disease it's occurring in the heart brain kidney and eyes then hypertensive heart diseases coronary artery disease left ventricular hypertrophy then heart failure so the left ventricular hypertrophy is nothing but enlargement of the left ventricles then coming to the complications of diabetes cerebrovascular disease uh, example stroke then a peripheral vascular disease circulating disorders that affects the blood vessels outside of the heart and brain then nephrosclerosis hardening of the small blood vessels in the kidneys then retinal damage then coming to the diagnosis of hypertension so for big manometer and stethoscope for used for find out and measuring the blood pressure then uh, coming to the treatment goals so hypertension collaborative care lifestyle modifications weight reduction dietary changes limitations of alcohol intake then regular physical activity then avoidance of tobacco use and stress and finally stress management then coming to the drug therapy so the four types of drugs used for hypertension so the first class of the drugs diuretics then beta blockers ac inhibitors and calcium channel blockers so coming to the diuretics thiazide type of the diuretics example chlorothiazide and hydrochlorothiazides then loop diuretics furosemide and torsemide so coming to the mechanism of action so it's inhibit the sodium chloride reabsorption side effects electrolyte imbalances decrease the sodium decrease the chloride and decrease the potassium so we have to advise the patients to take the potassium rich foods then importance and decreased libido also the side effects of the diuretics then coming to the beta adrenergic blockers example metoprolol propranolol atinolol and lebitolol then coming to the mechanism of action so it's block the beta adrenergic receptors and decreased the heart rate and decreased the ionotropy and reduces the sympathetic vasoconstrictions then coming to the side effects of the beta adrenergic blockers bradycardia hypotension heart failure and impotence then coming to the ace inhibitors example captopril enalapril benzopril and quinopril then coming to the mechanism of action so it's prevents the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 thereby the preventing the vasoconstriction associated with a2 then coming to the side effects of the ace inhibitors hypotension and cough then coming to the calcium channel blockers example nifedipine and amlodipine then coming to the mechanism of action so it's a block the movement of calcium into cells it's causing vasodilation then side effects of the calcium channel blockers bradycardia and heart block thank you